Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, this is Mike with Chavins RV Center here to congratulate you on the purchase of your Heartland Prowler 212RD travel trailer. I'm here to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things, get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. A couple things taken into consideration when parking. On your campsite, your awning. There'll be plenty of room for that to come out. And then over on your off campsite, I want you to think about where your power and water connections are going to be. Yours are both going to be located behind your tires, on your driver's side of your tow vehicle, or your off camp side. Power connection right there, water connection right there. So park accordingly so you can utilize facilities at the campsite. Once you arrive, unhook your hitch. First thing you do is level your unit. Your unit is equipped with a power tongue jack. Night docking light should you arrive at night. Retract to lower, extend to raise, so you got your unit level. Now, should you lose power, there's a hand crank right here, a manual override right there. So you can get that up and down if you don't have power. Speaking of power, check your battery post when you arrive. Make sure those haven't wiggled loose going down the road. Once we got our unit level, next thing we're gonna do is stabilize it. Your unit is equipped with power stabilizing jacks. Button right here for the front ones. As I hit extend, I'm going to recommend power uh, stabilizing jack pads. Jack pads will protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from dirt and debris, hot black top in the summer, uh, better distribute the weight. You see sometimes one will come down by itself, then the other one. Now you may have to adjust your feet. Extend them down. On top of your jack pads, uh, you got a 10% off coupon. Grab a four pack of those, put them down, run these down just until they're taut. So if our pad's down there, we're gonna run that down, bam. If I feel like our unit's lifting at all, go ahead and stop. Remember, these are stabilizing jacks, not leveling jacks. So you only wanna run your, these down until your unit's stable. I'm gonna run these back up here real quick. Go back in the rear and show you the rear one's working. Again, just run everything down till we're taunt because we don't want to change our levelness. Button for the rear one is right here by your door. Hit extend. There's those. Then this one, the other side's run down first. Happens a lot. This side's down. Again with your pads down there. Bang. Just as soon as you feel that unit start to lift, even if you want to back up some. You don't want to lose our stableness. Alright, once we got our unit level and stable, we can go ahead and hook up our power and water. Big long 30 amp cord right here. Plugs into the side over here. Where they connect now. Goes in at a little angle. Once it's in twist it to the right and then put on your washer at the end of that 30 amp cord if you need to plug in a home there's a 30 to 110 adapter that comes in your convenience pack got your power hooked up let's hook up our water at campsites we will hook up your city water connection first and foremost your water pressure regulator this water pressure regulator is going to reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 psi protecting the lines in your unit use this when hooking up your hose here Hook that up, hook up your hose, but don't turn your hose on yet. 
come right over here to our hot water heater and all we're doing at this point folks make sure your drain plugs back in there see so you throw a little plumber's tape around that get that in there nice and tight once that's in there tight then you can go ahead and turn on that hose and after that hose has been on for a little while go inside open up your water taps let the air out of the lines once water's flowing through those taps you can shut off those taps then you can turn on your hot water heater from indoors now let's say we're going to go camping and we're not going to hook up at a campsite we're going to go boondocking off the grid somewhere well in that case we'll want to fill up our fresh water tank that is just the left of your doorway here no need for a water pressure regulator here simply fill it up with a hose two ways to tell when it's full when there's a overflow valve right there or two on the inside where you check the levels of your tanks um your battery and your black and gray tanks there's also a fresh water button that'll tell you when this is full once it's full put your cap back on there and then whenever you want to utilize this water you'll have to turn on your water pump don't turn on your water pump when you're using city water that's already pressurized all right we're set up to camp with power and water let me go ahead and walk you around the rest of the outside of the unit starting here right here on your campsite your fresh water again there's going to be your low point drain draining tanks when we leave the campsite there's a quick connect lp your power tongue jacks or your power stabilizing jacks excuse me running them back up now those will be your drains for when you're at a campsite if you're using potable water filling this fresh water tank that's where you'll drain that tank at this is a flue for your furnace a couple things make sure nothing's blocking it and also uh if you have your furnace on steer clear of it it will get hot a couple outdoor speakers they say vent for your microwave here's where you can plug in a cable your cable outdoors 110 instead of cable or tv out here again your front stabilizing jack switch your pass through storage with your hitch work in here now your propane does come with a cover easy access top it's also on a regulator so if you point it toward the tank you wish to be using lefty loosey to open if you're both open and that is down the middle then it will take from one and then switch to the other one that's empty again your batteries you prep for solar here you can plug in a solar panel right here and that will trickle charge your batteries safety brake for your hitch system again the other side of your pass through storage down here is where your uh, gray and black tanks will dump this is a black tank flush we'll talk about that when we do dump our black tanks and leave them the campsite again your hot water heater if the hot water heater doesn't seem to be working come out here and check to see if this is bubbled up if it is press it back in it is a reset valve continue with your power you have an outdoor shower here let me pull this hose out store it here but it'll actually come up high enough to take a shower store it in there for travel again your city water connect cable for the campsites the spare tire i recommend getting a cover for that keep that from dry rotten getting wet all the time and up top you prep for a fury on backup camera it's a backup camera you can purchase for this device that sets on the dash you tow vehicle giving you a backup camera for the unit lastly on your awning if your campsite is down here you pick the cables there and it starts to rain you have this pitch adjust simply pull down on that and that will send the pitch this way and run all the rainwater this way well it covers everything on the outside let's go take a look inside your unit First thing I like to point out when coming in any unit this is the fire extinguisher. Make sure that you and everyone is camped with you knows that the fire extinguisher is located at the entry doorway. Coming up from there, some lighting, your interior and exterior lighting. Next to that, your awning. So I just want to show you on your awning, when you run that out, run that out until that flap falls down to 90 degrees and you can see that bar. 
that will extend past that and run itself up backwards all of them do so be careful and watch it as you take it out up above the door here is a qr code that you can get from heartland gives you a online owner's manual we're on him back in and we'll continue our tour up self-explanatory microwave up here you have a light and a fan above your cooktop this glass top makes an excellent backsplash turn it to light Get your spark down here and when your gas is on you will light up here turn that back to where it's supposed to be but over here's your sparker come around into your kitchen here do you have individual lighting one tens turning corner here and the hallway is going to be a thermostat, which I'm very much looking forward to turning the AC on. Turn the AC number. I think 33 is as low as that will go. Fix on here. We'll leave that on and we'll come back and show you the heat when I continue because it's rather warm in here. Continue down the hall. This closet, lighting here. Just want to mention, back in this back bedroom, when you travel, very important to make sure that you have this snapped back. Otherwise, this door is going to be banging all over on you. Lighting here, and here, accent lighting. Storage there, individual lighting here. You are prepped, prepped for an upgrade that you can get a hold of them through that QR code. Prep for a TV back here as well. Put in your bathroom. I want to mention in here, you have a hand crank open. Exhaust that runs off this. You can turn it on off here as well. Lighting. This is where we'll check our tanks. There's your brand new battery, empty fresh water. This one for your potable water, black and gray tanks. Here's where you turn on your water pump. Now it's important you do choose these selectly. This is uh, where you turn on your water pump or your water heater for gas. Over here is where you turn on your water heater for electric. Choose correctly. 110 with GFCI reset. Coming to your Norco fridge. Turn this on by holding this on for a couple seconds. So over here is your temperature change. One through five. Over here is what you're choosing. So whatever is white is what it represents. Whatever the blue is under is where we're at. So we are checking the freezer. Freezer is white on this. Freezer at five. The fridge, we like to keep the fridge at three of these. Oops. Our freezer. Let's the freezer back up to five. Choose the fridge. Put that down to three. And then this last one is a night mode. It's telling the fridge, hey, I'm not going to be opening and closing you as much. Could you save me some energy? Hold that in for a couple seconds to shut it off. Down below your fridge on the floor here is your access panel to your breaker box and fuses. You got a ton of 15s in there. A couple 40s, highly recommend having some of those with you when you go camping. And then your 12 volt carbon monoxide propane detector. The reason I mention this is 12 volt is it always runs off your battery. So if you are gonna be out boondocking somewhere, nothing plugged in charging your battery, disconnect one of your battery posts, your positive battery posts, while you're gone for the day to keep this from running you down. If you're plugged in, you're fine. Over here, you're all prepped for a TV. Sound system here. 
press that on. So here's our speakers indoors. We're in zone A. You can go loud, you can set them off. We're in zone B, so it's loud outdoors as well. Um, different modes, Bluetooth, AUX in, FM, different bands, alarm, sleep, clock, nice system. Um, you know you wiggle your table up, it'll remove those legs and set that down for a bed. Here's a smoke alarm here. I'm just going to let this AC run long enough for you to see it works. We come over here. You shut that off. Once you choose off, AC will shut off rather quickly. Now when you turn on your heat, go to heat. Furnace kicks on. Now when you shut the furnace off, you'll notice the furnace fan, as it does in all trailers, takes a little bit longer to shut off, not as quick as the AC. So that about covers everything on the inside. Let's act like we're leaving the campsite. First thing I like to do is shut off my interior lights. Then I can walk through the unit and see any individual lighting I may have left on. Then I say doors and drawers. Make sure all doors and drawers are closed. Nothing's gonna bounce around during travel. And then we'll exit the unit. Now we're bringing these steps in. The biggest thing you wanna remember is make sure this exterior door is all the way open. Otherwise this could catch on it. Lift this up inside. Take this handle, turn it either way, left or right. Now we'll lock these in. Lock and deadbolt your exterior door. Lift and turn your handle. Your door is ready for travel. Now, at this point, bring up our stabilizing jacks, unhook our power, our water, and our cable. Once the water is unhooked, we can dump these low point drains. And for all boondocking, we can dump that low point drain. Lastly, you come around to your hot water heater. Lift up on this pressure release valve. That's going to dump the remainder of the hot water out of your hot water heater just like that. Push that down, otherwise this door will not close. Then you can pull your drain handle. You don't have to you can do that at the end of the camping season. Close your hot water heater, hook up your hitch, and head on up to the dump station. That's the dump station, park accordingly. Your dump is gonna be just in front of your tires on your driver's side of your tow vehicle. Get there, hook up, and the first thing we're gonna do is pull our black handle. Now your sewer black tank is gonna be your left handle. Once that's done draining, you can hear it. Once it sounds like it's done draining, leave that black handle open Again, with your water pressure regulator, hook up the hose at the dump station, turn that on for a good five minutes. Come to your black tank flush, that's gonna wash all that nastiness out of your black tank. Unhook that, close your hose up, close that left handle, and pull your right handle. That's gonna be your cleaner waters, your sinks and your showers. And that'll clean your sewage hose out for you. Then you can sanitarily and conveniently store your sewage hose right here in your bumper again thank you guys so much for your purchase hope you enjoy this prowler for many years to come happy camping